It is really great to be in this region of the country, one that I haven't spent a lot of time in. And so it's, I'm getting introduced to the cities here in the region and the uh, industries around here. It's also great to see such a fantastic turnout here at this lunch. And uh, I understand there's an overflow crowd here that's actually getting a, a feed here too. So it's great to see so many people really interested in technology and interested in, in uh, what's next in that technology as well. I'm going to be talking about what's next in technology around the way we think about paradigm shifts. What happens is you have a, a, a technology, a system that's built around a technology, a way of doing things that everyone gets used to and, and comes to think is the way things are done. And then what you have is a new way of doing something, a new technology often, a new way, a new system that gets built around that new technology. And a, over a short period of time, that system proves its superiority to the old paradigm. And what you have is a very quick shift. So how does a paradigm shift work? Any new technology that gets adopted into a society or into a market goes through basically these stages. You start off with the innovators who jump on the new thing and really want to play with it and push it and play with it and figure it out. That's always a very small part, but it's also a very innovative crew and it's also a crew that starts to make it popular. And then you get the laggards, the people that kicking and screaming, you know, are going to hang on to a black and white TV until you can't even buy a black and white TV, right? Um, this happens with all technologies, essentially. The skill is understanding where you are in this curve and which ones are really going to take off permanently. Anyhow, the second thing is it's not just the adoption of the technology. Essentially, there's an old way of doing things. And then what happens is somebody has a new idea and says, I'm going to, there's a totally different way you could do this. It takes essentially the next stage is somebody that adopts it early and proves that this is a better way to go. And as soon as that happens, and you say that is clearly superior to this old way, what happens in almost a flash of a, a historical blink of an eye, everyone shifts. It's now gotten to the point where we've got 2 billion people on the planet now who are online. And this is even more crazy. In the last 10 years, we have now got 5 billion people have cell phones on the planet. So 3 fourths of the planet now is connected to this telecom network. So very soon, you're going to have almost every human being on the planet connected with very powerful computers in the palm of their hands for deep dirt cheap connected through this high bandwidth. This is a big deal. This starts to really get some crazy implications on the world. Boom, you've got this paradigm shift. And what I'm going to basically do is I'm going to tell you where it's going in the mobile, where it's going in the video, and where it's going in social. And we're in the middle of these ones, so you can see the power of what's happening, but it's not fully played out. So you can kind of still see why we're in the midst of it. Now, here's the one of the things that's a forward spin thing that most people haven't really totally gotten, because I've kind of been laying out things that are starting to be understood. This one is one that I would really point to. Built into every iPhone now and every iMac and now every iPad is the ability to, to essentially communicate with full motion video between two people, two individuals. It's called FaceTime. This is essentially the way that we are going to open up full video channel between individuals, which will blow away voice channels or even particularly texting channels. And the reason this is important is we have essentially been perfecting for you know, a million years how to communicate through our face. So you know when someone's winking at you or they kind of screw their nose up or they kind of like, you can read people beautifully because we've had a million years of evolution to figure this out. You can't really figure out when that guy is texting you, you know, something, what the heck he really means, what he's really feeling. You can't read him. We're going from that world to this world in the space of the next five years. That's a big deal. And the way to kind of understand it from a kind of practical point of view is to send a piece of text is that much information. To send a photo is that big. That's essentially the equivalent of video. Huge amount of information to moving motion video. 30 times a second, you've got to move information on what that person's doing, right? 30 times a second, a lot of information. But why is that important? Because that exact thing, that motion allows you to see the wink, see the little subtle things. It it's essentially conveys an incredible density of information to you, but takes a lot of room. So we had to build the pipes out. This is the traffic on the backbone of the internet from 1990 to 2010. The World Wide Web didn't exist in 1990, right? So its percentage was zero part. But essentially, once the web took off, the web by 2000, that's the one on the bottom there, is half of all internet traffic was the web, right? Well, then what happens at that point? You start to see the beginnings of video. But what, where did video really kick? That's the blue one, 2005. What it was that? That was YouTube. And now, 
Video is over, it's 51%. It's over half of all internet traffic now is video. Already, half of all internet. But the thing that gets really wild is Cisco predicts that by 2015, only five years out, 90% of all internet traffic will be video. So who is the star of this? It's, of course, YouTube. Today, every single day, I'm, two billion views, two billion videos are come up, streaming off of, off of uh, YouTube. Every day. Tomorrow, another two billion. There's only 6.7 billion people on the planet. It's an insane amount of video that's happening. The other thing I mentioned, these video channels, these open video channels that are kind of watch this happening with Apple's uh, FaceTime. Skype, right now, you can actually open video channels with people all over the world. Anyone who has a college kid is probably does this every Sunday night or whatever with their college kid now. It's the one way the parents connect. I got a college, I got a college freshman, and you, they, you open these video channels between these people wherever they are. I do a lot of my business now with Europe is through these open video channels. But here's the numbers. Half a billion people are doing this right now. Half a billion. It isn't just Pete Lydon and a few kids in college. It's, it's a lot of people doing this. The quick thing to think about is paradigm shift in politics was this. It's essentially we went from essentially a way of doing politics that was born of broadcast television with this guy, JFK. The old system said, ah, we get wealthy people's special interests, whether it's unions or, or, or corporations, but we, that's how you get the money. And then you use broadcast television. And that's how you won elections. Whoever did this best always won. It didn't, you know, went back and forth between the parties, but that was the way everyone won in politics. Until last cycle. And last cycle, in case, Obama is a perfect example, but it happened through a bunch of people uh, beyond him was it said, ah, using this new technology, we can actually flip the whole model. We can essentially figure out a way to actually aggregate many, many, many middle class people to put in money. Ah, you wouldn't need all that broadcast stuff. You could actually start using the internet web. That's what Obama did. So what's next? What's next is essentially the shift in solving problems. So we are now going from a physical meeting here is what we've, how we've solved problems forever. Physical people in the same room. Well, then we started thinking, ah, what would help us do that same meeting but from afar? Well, we can start sending, we can send emails back and forth, which is still the way most people do things. And then we realized, ah, you could actually have instant messaging. Same time you could talk to people. And so then there was Skype. Oh, you can open these videos. And so anyhow, what we've had is a proliferation of these little pieces of the tools of like, ah, we could collaborate from afar. Well, what's happening now is you're starting to watch essentially different. Now you're to the next generation, which is like, how do we integrate all those things into a different way? And now there's a bunch of startups, like Jive is one of them here. I don't know how do you know these Yammer's box. They're starting to say, how do we start to integrate that experience so that all you have to do is use one tool or several tools and essentially can get to the point where you're getting to the century where you get a virtual meeting here, which is getting close to the subtlety and complexity of physical meetings. That's the goal. Well, the thing is, the technology is getting us close there. Now, the proof of this, and this is how I'm going to end here, and this is essentially the virtual choir. What this guy did was he took a YouTube video in which he basically conducted and gave people music, and he had all these people on the internet just let random people uh, essentially um, audition and send them his, their video of them singing, and he chose the right ones, he got them to practice, he got them to sing, and they basically came up with, I'll show you a little fragment of this, this thing. stop here and say thank you. You've been a fantastic audience.